How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin with a 9 to 5 Mac. Welcome to episode number six of Back to the Mac. On this week's episode, I talk about five Mac-related things that I am looking forward to in 2018. Now, before we start that, I just wanna preface this episode by saying some things have changed. I've been taking a lot of your feedback and trying to apply that, albeit slowly, but have been trying to apply that in a way that brings noticeable changes and results to this video series. So I've tried to take some of your suggestions and apply them. A lot of things from a visual perspective. A lot of you complained about the cable management, how there were just cords and cables laying all over the floor. I've tried to address that as you can see in the background. That way it's nicer for you guys to look at. You're welcome. The next thing that I tried hard to address was the ambient light reflecting off the screen in the background. A lot of you not a lot, but several of you complained about that. So I've tried to address the reflection problem in a, how can I say this? A very, a very interesting way, <laughs> put it that way. So that's been addressed and some other things. Perhaps you've noticed this new aspect ratio. So it's a little tighter in here. So hopefully that makes a difference because most of you guys are watching this on an iPhone. A lot of you guys are watching this on your iPhone 10. So. Hopefully the new aspect ratio is something that you enjoy. Let me know down below in the comment section. Okay, so now that we got all the house cleaning out of the way, let's talk about another change related to this video series in particular, and that is a more focused, more pointed, more direct, uh, less fluff, less filler, and I'm trying to make this as concise as possible, yet still being fun, informative, etc. So we're gonna drop a lot of the stuff that just really ultimately didn't matter. We're going to stick to the topic and we're going to really focus on those topics to make this not so long and to make it just more concise and to the point. Yeah, that explanation was anything but concise and to the point. So on this week's episode, I want to talk about those five Mac related things that I am looking forward to in 2018. The first thing is something that I'm not even sure that Apple is actually going to be working on, but hopefully they learned something from 2017 where there were several very embarrassing bugs that crept up in Mac OS. Uh, we don't want to rehash that, but yeah. So my hope is that Apple really focuses on stability and bug fixes in Mac OS and also stability and bug fixes within some of their core apps like Final Cut Pro, but really a renewed focus on the core elements of Mac OS, the underlying frameworks would be a huge win for users. I don't think we need any more features right now. I don't want no mo. We're good on features. We just need stability. That's something I think they're gonna be working with on iOS 12. Hopefully they have just a renewed focus on stability, not so much the new features. We don't need a lot of new features, honestly, with the Mac. It's nice to have a few new features here and there. But for me, I place stability and reliability over new bells and whistles any day of the week. What about you? What's your experience been like over the last couple of years related to stability? On your Mac. Has it been fairly solid or have you experienced a lot of problems? Let me know down below in the comments. Now the second thing that I'm looking forward to is something that uh, was first reported on by Bloomberg and that is cross-platform apps on Mac OS. So reports are stating that there will be future development tools that allow developers to create a single application that's capable of running on the iPhone, the iPad, and Mac OS. So these apps will be designed in such a way that they can work with a touchscreen, they can work with a mouse, they can work with a trackpad. And reportedly, uh, this cross-platform support will come as a part of iOS 12 and macOS 10.14. Now, it's funny because I was just talking about not wanting a lot of new features, wanting to focus on stability, but this is a huge feature. This is a major feature. Now, there are two basic lines of thinking that I've encountered when considering cross-platform applications. The first line of thinking is that this will somehow dilute the quality of applications on the Mac, because this is obviously going to be a very iOS-centric endeavor, but basically people are complaining saying that, hey, this is going to result in a bunch of watered down iOS apps on the Mac that no one wants to use on a desktop. But really, it's kind of silly to even assume that that's how it's going to be because we don't know what Apple's plans are 
related to this. We just know some very, very high level details and who knows, this may not even ship with iOS 12 and with Mac OS 10.14. So I think it's worth waiting to see exactly what Apple's plans are regarding cross-platform support. Now, the second line of thought is a more positive take, and that's one that I would adopt. And that is that Apple is gonna use this as a way to stimulate app development on the Mac. Developers are mainly focused on iOS because that's where the people are. But this could serve as a way to get some of those development resources back to the Mac and not cause a bunch of fiscal and hourly overhead on the part of the development team. So it could be a win-win both for the user and for the developer. Will it be more iOS centric, UI kit centric, where developers are developing for iOS devices and they check a box to enable Mac support? Or will it be deeper than that? Will this be something like UX kit, the same framework that powers the Photos app on the Mac and on iOS. I don't know, but it sounds interesting. What do you guys think? I think it could be a really cool thing if pulled off correctly. And I think it, it can also be a really bad thing if pulled off not, not correctly, incorrectly. Now, the next thing that I'm strangely pumped about is LG's upcoming 21 by nine ultra wide 34 inch 5K display. Yes, they call it the 34WK95U rolls right off the tongue. But what's really cool about this is it's an ultra wide display with a resolution of 5120 by 2160. You don't get as much resolution as a 5K iMac or LG's ultra fine display, but you get a larger display that's a lot wider. So that may actually be a better setup for you depending on your use case. If you're working with a lot of timelines on Final Cut Pro 10, or Logic Pro 10, or Adobe Premiere Pro, or any app that uses a timeline where the timeline is horizontal and it goes on and on and on and on, then this could be a display you wanna look out for. Because I was super disappointed in the LG Ultra Fine display, which was, I think, a disappointment for most users. Like coming from the Thunderbolt display to the LG Ultra Fine 5K display, yes, it had more resolution, yes, it was Retina, but it was, pretty mediocre. I won't say it was horrible, but it has image retention issues. It has build quality issues. It had that weird shielding problem or lack thereof when you set a router too close to it, that's been fixed. But still, that just kind of shows you <laughs> that was super disappointing to pay that much for a 5K display and then to have it have all those issues. But of course, we still don't know how the 34WK95U will fare but I'm pretty optimistic and I'm just super hyped to try the ultra wide 21 by nine, 34 inch diagonal display. That's gonna be really cool with that resolution of 5120 by 2160 pixel double, that's 2560 by 1080. So you're getting 2560 by 1080 retina resolution with that. Not a whole lot of vertical resolution, but that may not matter depending on your use case. Looking forward to trying Final Cut Pro with that thing. And here's another thing I'm really looking forward to, improved eGPU support. You guys know I'm a huge fan of external GPUs. I have the Mantis Venus. I have used the Akitio Node Pro recently. I've tried a whole bunch of other external GPU boxes and they all have one thing in common. They don't really work that well on Mac OS yet, but that is changing thankfully. With the latest beta releases, we've seen some noticeable improvements in stability and hot swappability hot plug ability. Mac OS is actually recognizing certain cards by name like the Vega 64 and the RX 580, but there's still a couple of underlying issues that I feel like need to be addressed soon. And hopefully, as it says on the Mac OS High Sierra webpage, these updates will come soon. In fact, it says spring 2018, and I think spring is just a week away, if I'm not mistaken. Hey Siri, when does spring start? Spring begins Tuesday. So I wanna see better performance, improved stability, and here's the biggie. I want to see internal display support. So being able to drive the internal display of your MacBook or your iMac using the external GPU. Right now, you can't do that. You can do it on Windows machines. You can't do it on the Mac. Hopefully that is something that is in the cards. And lastly, the new MacBook slash MacBook Air refresh. Now rumors are stating that a new low cost MacBook 
something, whether they call it an Air or just MacBook is still up in the air, but it should be a new lower cost 13 inch model with a retina display. What's interesting is that the MacBook Air at $999 is still selling really well right now even though it has some very antiquated specs, such as a non-retina display. Do not want. But the point is, that $9.99 price point matters. Students, people who don't wanna spend an obscene amount of money on a laptop, I could see a new updated MacBook with the retina display at a $9.99 or cheaper price point being very popular. It's also possible that this new hardware could supplant both the current MacBook Air and the 12 inch MacBook, unifying the two product lines. Now, of course, if this happens, higher end 13 inch MacBooks would still exist. Uh, just like right now, you can buy a 12 inch MacBook for almost two grand. So not only would this help Apple to simplify their Mac offerings, it also opens the door to a bunch of potential new customers. So there you have it, folks. Those are five of the things that I'm looking forward to in 2018 related to the Mac. Number one, a more stable version of Mac OS. Number two, cross-platform apps on Mac OS. Number three, LG's upcoming 5K ultra wide display, number four, improved eGPU support, and number five, a cheaper MacBook with a Retina display. So ladies and gentlemen, what Mac centric things are you looking forward to in 2018? Let me know down below in the comment section and thumbs up if you appreciated this video. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.